Journey into space. The BBC presents Jet Morgan in Operation Luna. After being stranded on the moon for 14 Earth days due to a power failure, the rocket ship Luna was at last ready to make her return journey back to Earth. Then a strange object which looked like another spaceship was seen on the televiewer screen and Jet Morgan and Mitch went out to investigate it. Mitch entered the craft and according to him left almost immediately when he felt the ship begin to vibrate. But when he returned to his own ship, Mitch found that he'd been in the strange spacecraft for longer than he thought and that during that time his voice had been heard explaining that the spaceship was actually from another part of the universe and had reached our solar system by travelling through time. The rocket ship Luna took off, but before setting her nose towards the Earth and home, went into a circular orbit round the moon so that the far side could be photographed. Hey, Jet, come over here. Look at this. What? Directly below us now. Biggest crater I've ever seen. It's about twice the size of Copernicus. Yes, I can see it. It's crammed full of little craters, tiny ones, in regular lines. Yes, there's a tendency for craters on the Earth side to form lines of a sort, but not like these. These just can't be natural. I'll say they can't. Those craters are moving. Yes, they're leaving the ground. They're not craters at all. They're ships, just like the one that landed near us. Dozens of them. And they're coming up here. They're coming up after us. Good heavens, I think they are too. Isn't there something we can do to get away from them? Turn on the motor or something? Not while we're on this side of the moon. Not until our nose is pointing towards the Earth again. Blimey. Well, they're keeping their distance at the moment anyway. Look at them weaving about like aircraft. Yeah, except there's no air for them to fly in. How can they do it? Well, search me. And I'd give five years of my life to know. Keep working that camera, Doc. Get as many pictures as you can. You bet. They're going to get the surprise of their lives back home. A whole fleet of spaceships based on the other side of the moon. Hey, they're getting into some kind of formation. Yeah, now why should they do that? Maybe they're going to attack us. If they are, there's nothing we can do about it. We've no weapons, nothing. We can't even take evasive action. We better call up control and tell them about this. You shall loaf, Mitch. It'd be a waste of time. We can't be heard with the moon between the Earth and us. No, still directly below us. Same height, same speed. And in a circular formation, like a, a ring of toadstools. How long have they been following us now? About 50 minutes, but we've nearly completed the circuit. Stand by to cut in the motor. With luck, we'll get away from them. Okay. Now get onto your bunks and strap yourselves in. Okay. I wonder how our friends below will react when they see us make a beeline for Earth. We'll soon find out. Let me know when you're all set. All set. Okay. Okay. Then cut in the stern televiewer, Lemmy, and switch in forward view. Televiewer, forward view, on. There it is. There's the Earth. Almost directly ahead. And very welcome she looks, too. Position, Lemmy. Coming into centre, five degrees. Doc, stabiliser. Stabiliser. Four degrees. Mitch, motor. Standing by. Three degrees. Stand by for firing. Two. Firing imminent. One. Contact. Cut the motor! Earth, now dead centre. Course correct. Cut the stabiliser, Doc. Stabiliser, cut. Well, that's that. On course, correct velocity, and we're heading for home. Unfasten your safety straps and get back to your station. Ah. And we'll see just what our escort made of that little manoeuvre. Stern televiewer, on... Are they still there, Mitch? I can't see them. <laughs> Good. We must have left them miles behind. Wait a minute. I can see them. There. Those tiny black dots against the bright moon surface. Yes. They're still in that strange formation. Mitch, you haven't checked the motor or the fuel supply. Sorry, Jet. I'll do it right away. Now, Doc, where are they? Uh, there. See them? Yes. Say, wait a minute. They're not below us anymore. They're flying at the same height as we are. Yes. Yes, I think they are. How do you account for that? 
They must be following us. Hello, Earth. Rocket ship Luna calling home. Over. And they're gaining on us, too. They're getting bigger every second. Motor and fuel tanks, OK. Plenty of reserve fuel left. Hoodles of it. Mitch, those ships, whatever they are, they're following us now and gaining on us. What? Well, look at them. They're getting closer all the time. Hello, Earth. Rocket ship Luna calling control. Calling control. Come in, please. Yes, they're following us, all right. What are they up to? What's the idea? Well, maybe they're just curious, want to take a closer look at us. Either that or they are planning an attack. Lemmy, have you got control yet? No, give us a chance. Hello, Earth. Oh. Rocket what good will contacting base do? Well, for us, in, probably please. very little. Hello, but at least we ought to tell Earth to Rocket warn them, Luna let future crews control. know what to expect out here. Come in, hey, please. listen. Huh? Well, can't you hear it? Jet, that noise, it's here again. Yes. Jet, can't you hear it? Yes, Lemmy, I can, but get control for heaven's sake. I can't, it's that blinking music. Hello, hello, Earth. This is rocket ship Luna calling control. It's getting louder. They're still coming, getting closer. That's why it gets louder. That noise must come from them. Hello, Earth. Hello. Good grief. What is it, Doc? They must be going to ram us. The whole lot of them. What? Yes, they must be. They haven't changed their line of flight one iota. They're coming straight at us. But they wouldn't dare. They'd do as much harm to themselves as they would to us. Even if they're remote controlled? Oh, that is a point. Well, they're getting pretty close. Jet. Huh? Do you feel anything? Feel anything? What? Gravity's returning to the ship. Oh, it's impossible. It is, I tell you. They're almost on us. Control, this is Luna. Come in, please. Emergency. I can feel the gravity pull. Oh, so can I it's, now. It's beginning to get difficult to stand up. Shit, what's happening? The ships, they're here. They must be all around us. Get onto your bunks. Live flat. Live flat. I, I can't. I, I can't make it. Then lie where you are on the floor. Hello, Earth. Hello. Jerry, get Earth. down. Everybody... Lie down! Jumping jeepers, what is going on? The televiewer, there's a ship right up close behind us. It fills the whole screen. It... Oh. Oh. Oh, where... What happened? Doc, Mitch, Lemmy, can you hear me? Yeah, I, I can, Jet. What happened to us, Mitch? I don't know. Oh, how do you feel? Oh, crook. Real crook. Yeah, me too, but the pressure seems to have gone now. I blacked out. Yes, yeah, so did I, I think. Doc, Lemmy, you all right? Lemmy, can you hear me? They're out, Jet, flat out, unconscious. Hey, can you get up? I think so. Oh, there. Oh. Uh, Lemmy's waking up. Lemmy. Oh. Are you all right? Are you oh. hurt? Oh, Jet, leave me alone. Oh, I feel shocking. Oh, we all do. The ship must have accelerated. I don't know how, but that's all I can think of. Uh, Jet, Doc's coming round. How are you feeling, Doc? Doc, are you all right? Look, we'd better get him onto his bunk. Help me lift him. Oh, right. I feel like I don't care if I die. Get onto your bunk too, Lemmy. Don't oh. lie there on the floor. <laughs> yes, Jet. If you're feeling up to it, Lemmy... You might give us a hand with Doc. Yes, Mitch. Hold on. I'm coming. Just stay put until you feel better. Thanks. You feeling better, Lemmy? Yes, a bit. Then stay with him. As soon as you can, try to raise control. Right. Come on, Mitch. See if we can find out what happened to us. We'll take a look at the televiewer first. See if those things are still out there. It's truth. What's the matter with it? It's gone crazy. The tube must have gone. No, Mitch, I don't think it's that. Then what is it? Why don't we get a clear picture? Why doesn't it keep still? It is a clear picture. Huh? Those points of light travelling from the top of the frame to the bottom are stars. Stars? Yes, Mitch. The ship is spinning, turning head over heels. If it wasn't for the stars flashing past us on the screen, we'd never have known. But, but how did that happen? What set her off? I don't know. But we've got to steady her, get her back onto an even keel. We'll never find our position or anything else unless we do. We can use the flywheels as counteraction. Yes, but they're so small, it'll take a long time before we're steady again. What do we care, so long as we can stop her turning over like this? Well, put in number one for a start. Yes, all right, yeah. Then switch her on. Number one. We're still turning, but she should settle down soon. I think we might start taking a look at things now. Rotate the televiewer camera, Mitch, and see if those ships are still following us. Well, certainly not on the port side or directly behind us. Try the starboard side. I'm turning. No. 
Well, either they've gone or they must be directly in front of us. I'll switch on the forward view. No, we better take a fix on the moon. Check our course. Yeah. No, wait a minute. Eh? Did you see the moon just now? No, I didn't, but we've been turning over, Mitch. Heaven knows which way the ship is pointing now. The moon might be forward, too. In that case, the Earth must be behind us, and we should see that. Rotate the camera, Mitch. Let's look again. You're darn right. There's no sign of it. Either the Earth or the moon. Hello. Hello, Earth. Rocket ship Luna calling. Luna calling control. Come in, please. Stars. Nothing but stars. Keep her turning, Mitch. They must be there. The Earth and moon can't both disappear. Just like that. Hello. Hello. Luna calling Earth. Rocket ship Luna calling Wongawalla. Come in, please. Come in. It's, it's no good yet. They're not there. Oh, there must be an explanation. I know. Somehow or other, we must have got back to the far side of the moon, with our stern pointing away from it. If we switch on the forward view, we'll see the moon all right and the Earth behind it. Hello. Hello. Are you receiving us? Wonga Walla, come in, please. We need your help. Well, there's the forward view. Not a sign. Rotate the thing, Mitch. They can't be in line with the camera. Hey. Jet, Jet. What is it, Lemmy? I can't raise a sausage. Absolutely nothing. Not on any band. Are you sure the set's working all right? As far as I can tell, but I can't pick up a thing. Not on any frequency. It's like every transmitter back on Earth is packed in. Oh, don't be ridiculous. You must be able to get something. Keep trying. Well, if you say so. Any sign yet, Mitch? No, and I've gone almost right round. There you are. A full turn. Nothing. Oh, but this is fantastic. We couldn't possibly miss objects the size of the Earth and the Moon. The moon's image alone should more than fill the whole screen. We can't be that far away from it. We've got to face it, Jet. If they're there, we can't pick them up. If they're there... Something must be wrong with the televiewer. Then why did we see the stars? It's no good, Jet. I can't raise a thing. Not a single living soul. Jet? Yes, Doc? What's the trouble? No, we don't know. Lemmy says the radio's working, but he can't pick up anybody. To all appearances, the televiewer's working, but we can't pick up the moon or the Earth. And we've searched every possible direction. We see nothing but stars. Uh, no sign of the ships? No, not a sign. Well, that's something. But we must be way off course. Oh, that's putting it mildly. We'd have to be thousands of miles off course for this to happen. The televiewer must have gone wrong. Well, there's only one way to be sure of that. Go out there and look with our own eyes. That's all we can do. Then let's get our suits on and go. This has got to be solved, and quick. We've got no time to waste. Look, I'll, I'll work the airlock for you. Uh, not if you don't feel up to it, Doc. No, Lemmy can do it. No, I'll do it. It's more important that he stays with the radio. Oh, very well. Give us a couple of minutes to get the suits on. Hello, hello. Rocket ship Luna calling. Rocket ship Luna calling control. Wonga Walla, Australia. Rocket... Okay, Doc. Close the hatch. Hatch closing. Shh. Now fastening helmet. Over to intercom. Helmet fastened. Mind you. Somebody please come in, wherever you are. All right, exhaust the airlock. Exhausting airlock. I oh, don't care if you don't speak English. Suit inflating. Suit inflating. Air pressure zero. OK, Doc, open the door. Main door, contact. Leaving ship. Check. Fastening safety line. Now walking upside of ship. Now fastening safety line. Walking upside of ship behind jet. Can you see the earth or the moon? Not yet. Haven't got high enough to get a good view, but I'm nearly there. Now. Well? Not a sign. Can you see them, Mitch? No, jet. They're not there. Then they must be underneath the ship. Uh, you can't see them because the ship's in the way. No, Doc. Not a hope, I'm afraid. Well, then what's the explanation? I don't know. It's almost as though we'd left the entire solar system altogether. Left it behind and got completely out of sight of it in a few minutes. But that's just not possible. I'm not so sure that it isn't. How do you mean, Mitch? Jet, look at the stars. Line them up with a part of the ship. Well? Don't you see? They're slowly, very slowly moving past. What? Try it for yourself. Go on, try it. Yes, they are. Very, very slowly, but they're moving. We must be traveling at a tremendous speed, a fantastic speed. 
That's why there's no sign of the Earth or Moon. We, we left them way behind. Oh, I can't believe it. It's too incredible to grasp. Uh, well, let's get back into the ship, Mitch. This whole thing might be a hallucination. Hallucination? Look, there. See that? Oh. A yellow star. And near enough to show up as a disk. Did you see anything like that on the way out from Earth? Well, we couldn't expect to. We can't get anywhere near that close to a star, even the nearest star. Can't we? Well, that darn thing's close enough, isn't it? it... Good heavens! The sun! The sun? Of course! And we're travelling away from it. That's why Lemmy can't pick up anything on the radio. We're out of range. Well, take it easy, Jed. It might not be the sun. We don't know. Hello, Doc. Yes? We're coming back into the ship. It must be a dream. All a dream. We'll wake up soon. We've got to. <laughs> That's the position. There's no sign of the moon, the earth, the sun, Mars, no sign of the solar system at all. But unless we find it and get back to it, we're done for. One of those stars out there must be the sun. And how do we find out which? Well, by the constellations. Yes, that's it. If we could recognise a few star groups, we might deduce our position from them, and that would oh, give not us... not a the... hope, Lemmy. Look at the what? screen. Look at the stars drifting by. Thousands of them. Can you pick any given constellation out of that lot? Well, I can't, no, but I'm only the radio operator. I'm afraid I can't either, Lemmy. Right? We'll never do it that way. Mm. And constellations, as seen from here, right in among them, as it were, look very different from what they do on Earth. Virtually unrecognizable. Look, even if we did get our bearings, how do we take the ship out of the course she's in now and put her in the right one? With a motor and the gyros. Rotate the ship until the nose is pointing in the right direction and then turn on the power. Look, at the speed we're travelling, I don't think cutting in the motor would make any noticeable difference. Even if we used all the fuel in one burst. What, you mean, we haven't a chance? No, uh, no hope at all? Not of getting back home. Not, not even to the moon? Oh, I didn't much like it, but it would be better than nothing. We could at least see the Earth from there. Not even to the moon. Well, how did this happen? What caused it? Less than an hour ago, we were quietly coasting above the moon's surface, minding our own business, and now look at the mess we're in. Lemmy, none of us know how this happened. All we do know is that those ships had something to do with it. Somehow, they've managed to increase our speed, carry us faster and further than man has ever dreamed he could go. Then where are those perishing ships? Where do they show themselves? Where are they taking us? We don't know that they're taking us anywhere. Here. Wait a minute. They said they came from the other side of the universe, didn't they? Well, maybe that's where we're going. Seems that in, in one go they swept us right out of our little solar system and smack into the middle of eternity. Yeah, but where is eternity? We must be going somewhere. Let me... The universe is vast. You know that. It's on the cards that we'll never land up anywhere. I? I mean it. Ah, oh, but that's impossible. Just take a look at those stars out there. Even if we just go drifting helplessly on, we're, we're bound to meet up with one of them in the end. Every one of those stars is a million times bigger than this ship. They've been drifting out here in space for millions and millions of years. And in all that time, only an infinitesimal number, if that, have ever actually collided. So what are our chances, Lemmy? Millions of years, you say? Yes. How much oxygen we got? Enough for a little more than four and a half days. Uh, silly, isn't it? You could look at it that way. But them things, them ships or whatever they were, they told us through Mitch that... There was thousands of planetary systems in the universe, all teeming with life. There probably are. Well, if we can leave our own in such a hurry, and it likely we're liable to meet up with another just as quick, maybe the very one those ships come from themselves. We might at that. We might do anything. We, we just don't know. All we do know is that we're somewhere out in space, probably zooming through the Milky Way at a speed something approaching that of light. Well, look, even if we did come across another solar system... What are the chances of its planets being suitable for us to land on? And, assuming they are, what are the chances of our being able to survive on them? Well, not much. Aye? Well, why should there be? Take our own planetary system. Of the nine known planets, not counting the asteroids, the, the only one, so far as we know, supporting any life is our Earth. Well, what about the others? Well, Mercury's so near the sun, the temperature is high enough to keep lead in a molten state. Could anything live in that? Oh, I shouldn't think so. Venus, whose surface no man has ever glimpsed, is so hot that even if her atmosphere contained enough oxygen, which it doesn't, life would be virtually impossible. Oh. 
Mars, with its thin atmosphere, may support some kind of plant life, but life in Jupiter, Saturn, or any of the other planets will be frozen solid. It just couldn't exist. So what are our chances of finding just one planet in thousands, presumably millions, out here that could support life? Always supposing we're alive when we reach it. Well, if you ask me, this trip has turned out to be a dead loss all round. But other planets in other planetary systems don't have to be like ours, do they? No, they don't. They could be of many kinds. What, for instance? Well, some might well still be in a molten state in the first stage of their development. Others could have long since gone right through their life cycle and now be dead, barren, lifeless, like the moon. Yes. Some might well be enclosed in, in poisonous atmosphere. Or others have no atmosphere at all. Or be so large and the gravity pull so strong, we couldn't even stand up. Oh, some so small, we could jump 50 feet in the air at every step. You know, others might be much like the Earth, but have no water, and there can't be any life without water. Some might have their surfaces entirely covered in water, just as the Earth would be if all the land areas suddenly subsided and disappeared under the oceans. Mm, a planet entirely covered with water. It's not impossible, Mitch. Well, anyway, there'd be no point in landing there. I can't swim. On top of that, you must remember that we are equipped only for moon or earth landings. Landing anywhere else might need a completely different approach, different methods, different kinds of equipment. Not very encouraging, is it? I'm afraid we've all got to face up to it. We're helpless. Absolutely helpless. No idea where we are, what direction we're travelling in, and even if we knew, powerless to exert any kind of control whatever over the ship. I'd sit down and make me will but there'd be nobody to read it. To think that our attempt to conquer such a small part of the universe should have resulted in this. An endless journey through eternity. Yeah, this is what comes of meddling with things we don't understand. We should have stayed home where life was worth living. Well, there's no use in crying over it now. We have to do something, if only to keep our reason. You're the captain of the ship, Jet. Anything you say? Well, for a start, we'll carry out normal routine. Check the equipment, call up base on the radio. What good would that do? According to you, there's no radio wave could leave Earth fast enough to catch us up. There's no sense in sitting back and brooding over the position. The only things we can do are those we've been doing in connection with the ship's routine, and we'll carry on that way until we... Let me get to the radio. Yes, Jet. Mitch, check the motor, fuel gauges. Yes, right, Jet. I'll check the radar and keep telling your watch for the next hour. Doc? Yeah? You'll keep a log, just as you did during the long wait on the moon. Yeah, sure. Uh, get started. And let's have no more talk about solar systems, planets, or anything else unless it's going to help the situation. November the 21st, 1965, Earth time. It is now more than two hours since we found ourselves in these new and frightening circumstances. How we got here, what really caused it, we shall probably never know. We are like a ship at sea, drifting. Only our chance of ever making land must be negligible. For we are adrift in space, maybe destined to wander around the universe forever, helplessly, hopelessly. A tiny speck of humanity lost in a vast nothingness. Everybody goes about his normal duties as though we were coasting back to Earth from the moon, as indeed, but for this fantastic, stupendous trick of fate, we would be. Mitch periodically checks the motor, fuel tanks, oxygen supply, and air conditioner. Lemmy stays at the radio, trying and hoping to get some kind of contact with somebody, somewhere. Jet remains at the televiewer, transfixed, hoping that, in spite of everything, something will appear on it which will give us some hope, a straw to clutch. Hey, Doc, Mitch, Lemmy, come over here, look. What is it? I think we're slowing down. What makes you think so? Well, the drift of stars across the screen has been getting slower. What does that mean? Well, how should I know, but it must mean something. Well, well what's that? Right in the center. Eh? That little spot of light, almost a disk. Where? There, see it? Yes, I can. Right smack in the middle. The ship's nose must be pointing straight at it. It's not quite a disk. It's more like the moon when it's nearly full. Wouldn't be the moon, would it? If it was, we'd see the Earth, too. Oh. If it's shining by reflected light... The star, its sun, must be to the left of it. Uh, rotate the camera, Jet. See if you can find it. There it is. There, see? Many times bigger. But it's the solid body we're heading for. 
We better concentrate on that. Are we going to hit it? I don't know. We're approaching it pretty fast. We must be. I thought you said we'd slowed down. Oh, we have, but only by comparison. Doc, get to the radar. As we get nearer to it, we might get some idea of our true speed. Right. Oh, look at it. It fills half the screen now. It has an atmosphere, no doubt about that. Yeah, but what's it composed of? Methane? Ammonia? Or what? The chances of it being air are a million to one against. Still, it's a planet, an island in a limitless ocean. And we're heading straight for it, at a speed at which we might be able to control the ship. It's a chance in a million, our only hope. You mean you're going to attempt landing on it? Well, why not? If we're going to die anyway, it might as well be on that... whatever it is, as out here in nothing. But it's so far away from home. No further than we'll ever be. This is our one chance of survival. But we've no idea what's on it, who's on it. We might even be wrecked and end up as a sort of a space family Robinson. What do you say, Mitch? Shall we try it? Now, wait a minute, Jet. Think what you're doing. We haven't much time to think. An hour or so and we'll either have crashed into it or passed it by. It'll be too late to make any decision then. I'm all for taking the chance. Let's try to land. Doc? Me too. I suppose if I say I'm not, I'll be considered overruled? Yes. I'm overruled. All right. A landing procedure will be the same as it would have been for landing on Earth. With the aid of the atmosphere? How else? But it may not be dense enough to afford the necessary braking power. That we'll find out, but we'll try it just the same. Open up the pilot's cabin, Doc. I'm going in. You've been listening to episode six of Journey into Space with Andrew Folds as Jet Morgan, Alfie Bass as Lemmy, Guy Kingsley Pointer as Doc, and David Williams as Mitch. Other parts were played by David Jacobs. The orchestra was conducted by Van Phillips, who also composed the music. Journey into Space was written and produced for the BBC by Charles Chilton. <laughs>